is the set this up. Set, set this up for the folks out there so about Brian. Brian Brian's the president of EMC's Symmetrics division. I have known Brian for a number of years, um, back when EMC was just a tiny little company, and he's been there since the early he's days. He's president. Symmetrics. He's, he's the, president. the president. Yeah. of the Symmetrics, which is the high end so storage. John Brian is Napolitano's counterpart in Symmetrics, right? And we've had. We've had Brian on before. He's uh, he's been a great guest. The Cube alum. Hey, he's Brian, how you doing? Excellent, thanks. Welcome back to the Cube. Back to the Cube. Welcome back. We're here in Vegas. All right. A year ago, we were in Boston. We were in Boston. Seems like just yesterday. You were, I, got, I got my Boston Celtics uh, shirt on. Let's yeah, hope well, they can pull it off. Yeah, let's, we need some the, help today. We definitely <laughs> need some help. We'll be in the sports book, Dave. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what time's the game on? <laughs> yeah, so uh, so as, as I was saying, Brian, you've been uh, been at Symmetric since the, the early days. You know you know the history, but it's really changed dramatically, hasn't it? I mean, it's like nothing, doesn't even look close to what it used to. I mean, other than you got some great customers and you're, you know, top tier, you know. But but the, the technology has changed dramatically. The, the, out, the, the underlying infrastructure is changing in, in the IT business and the whole cloud thing. So, you know, so first of all, start with, you know, what's the event all about for you? Um, talking to a lot of customers. Tell us, you know, what's what's on your mind these days? Yeah, so, uh, you know, clearly from my perspective, the, the whole IT as a service, um, the model, the landscaping is changing dramatically as we speak, and it's just phenomenal about the rate of change uh, that's occurring in our industry. And it's not just the model, but also the technology. Pat talked about it in his keynote. You know, kind of some fundamental shifts in terms of multi-core, flash, virtualization. We're taking all those fundamental shifts and, and you know, embedding those types of technologies into our products at EMC. Um, and it's just tremendous. I, I expect change to continue. It's the most change I've seen in the industry. It's a great industry to be in. How is that uh, right affecting? Uh, how is that change, Brian, affecting your management style with your team? Obviously, we're seeing M and A play a big role in some of the new additions going way back to Data Domain, but more recently, last year, Green Plum and Isilon. We heard from Rich how he sponsored Isilon. Right. So you got the change. You got massive growth. Um, how are you, how is that changing your management uh, uh, approach? Yeah, great question. So uh, you talked about Rich. He helped to drive a lot of the Isilon strategy. Um, back in, I think, December of 10 or 09, uh, Pat asked me to you know, look at the uh, data warehouse and analytics market. So spent a lot of time uh, in that space, uh, helped to drive the acquisition of Greenplum. Did you sponsor that one? Yeah, I sponsored that one. And uh, just it's, it's tremendous in terms of the capabilities. So when we looked at the market, we said, hey, you know, um, you know, it's a big market. You know, it's a very large in terms of products, software, and services. Great market, and very adjacent to what EMC does in terms of our core business. And so, uh, when we looked at the technology players in the market, we kind of did a you know broad canvas of what was going on, and the market was kind of um, I call it trifurcated. So I don't know if that's a word or not, but I just it made now. it up, it so I guess now. it's a word. When was that, what day was that? When you guys uh, started scouring the landscape and you found Green Plum, what time frame was that? How fast did you move Yeah, on so that? basically Pat uh, said, hey, let's go look at this in December of 09, and it took us about six months to go through that whole process. So you're saying the market so, was trifurcated. Trifurcated, what? there were, you know, if you look at the big four, it was Oracle, IBM, uh, Teradata, and, uh, and um, I'm drawing a blank. Somebody Oracle, else. Or, 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 and Oracle, and IBM, Teradata, and Microsoft. And, oh, okay, and then yeah, directly sure. in the middle was Netiza. And then, then there was an array of, you know, kind of uh, emergent Vertica, players. Astro Data, Vertica, Astrodata, Vertica, Astro Data, Green Plum, Paracel. Yeah, okay. And what we looked at was a lot of the guys in the emergent player space were, um, you know, they had left some of the bigger companies because they couldn't solve some of the architectural problems with the older mo models of DBMS systems. And so when we looked at Greenplum, they were the most compelling technology out there. MPP, shared nothing, mixed columnar and row capabilities, and, and just it wasn't just about the IP. The intellectual, uh, uh, you know, the IQ of the people was just tremendous. You know, guys like uh, Luke Longren and Scott Yar, the two co-founders of it. So, you know, these guys bring a lot of energy to you know, to, to EMC, it's great to have them as part of the team. They so. got some mojo too. I mean, they got a swagger. Yeah. Um, 
they're cocky but not arrogant. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So like they have a, a good, and it's a little bit of a Silicon Valley vibe, but they're clearly they're taking on Hadoop. Uh, big, big time, and there's, there's an array of competition now. Cloudera being the leader in that area, but, but Data Stacks and a bunch of other startups right. are in there. So you know, Pat was very straightforward. He said, "Hey, you know, we're just going to we're entering the market. We're going to we're going to go there." Right. And so he didn't really want to address the competition issue more of in the sense of it, that's what our customers want. We're going to have it integrated. Right. Well, um, what impressed me about Pat last yesterday we were talking about this, and he he said he was getting some a lot of questions around you know why Greenplum. Right, and uh, and he said he put that to bed by saying, "Look, we had the pick of the litter. We chose right. Green Plum. You were sort of involved in looking at that. Absolutely. So it was sort of interesting to to see that you guys lopped on them. They weren't necessarily the largest of those companies. No, were they? Far no, yeah, no. but uh, there, you know, a couple of them r r around the rough, you know, r same size, some smaller. Yeah, uh, but net net, they were by far the best technical." You know, best IP, best IQ. You know, in the how bunch. are you guys handling the change in the marketplace? Obviously, on one end of the cloud, you got Amazon recently crashed, and you know, PlayStation Network, and you know, crashed, and big, big problems, train wreck over there. And then on the kind of emerging entrepreneurial side with open source, Hadoop, it's a sandbox, and a lot of innovation coming out. That's early. Um, EMC's got to play nicely in these sandboxes. You guys uh, have expanded your partnership, um, aggressive. How are you guys going to play nicely in that environment or it's not even an issue for you? Yeah, it's a great question. I think, you know, fundamentally we, um, you know, EMC's has been and will be a technology company. That's our play. You know, we want to make sure that we partner with the best in the industry. Uh, the industry, you know, right now as we look at it, you know, the big players are verticalizing and that's not our strategy. Our strategy is to be, you know, best in class in what we do and drive the technology uh, in as many places as we can and make it as pervasive as we can. You know, so I, I think going forward, you know, that, and, but it's, it, it's tough. I mean, you, you do have to, you know, make sure that you've established yourself as a presence in emerging markets. And so you will be, you know, competitive in, in a lot of uh, different environments. And that's just the nature of the business. Dave and I were joking about, um, you know, Pat's on the West Coast, Jeremy's on the West Coast, and they've got this West Coast offense going. And EMC's marketing is picked up. Cloud meets big data is great messaging, kind of builds on last year's uh, theme. So it's got good trajectory. Um, is that the new EMC, nimble West Coast offense, run and shoot? Uh, Kind of uh, fast. Ryan's the, like the star running back. In this <laughs> That's right. That's the deal. <laughs> you know. I, yeah, we got we got a great staff uh, to definitely help. But uh, yeah, great shift. Jeremy's brought a lot on you know on board. Um, you know, just he uh, understands what marketing's role is. Does a great job at it, and you can see a transformation of EMC. And yeah. uh, it's been yet great. another one. Yet another one. I mean, this is actually a really good. You know, addition, you look at what, who Joe's brought on staff, it's been great addition to the team, overall EMC team. So, yeah, you'll see that. In fact, I just hired a guy uh, uh, from uh, Brocade, Bob Bram, to be my VP of marketing. Bob's on the West Coast as well, so we do have a center <laughs> center nice. of gravity out there, cool. and he'll, he'll be, you know, joined up with... Uh, Actually, the Green Plum guys are in San uh, Mateo. Guys. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, big West Coast powerhouse. I mean, EMC is always, in my view, being from the New England area, has been that New England culture. Um, but now it's just so diverse. You got all those acquisitions under your belt. And uh, we're wondering what's exciting for you you these days in terms of, obviously, you know, the, the shift to, to the Lightning Project and fast data. Um, what's exciting you these days? There's a lot. <laughs> You know, as I mentioned, the model is transforming, the technology is transforming. Um, you know, there, you, you look at, again, back to the rate of change in the industry, a lot of people, a lot of companies are afraid of change. EMC's never been afraid of change. It's all about change, how we go forward, you know, how we make a difference, how we've been reinventing ourselves, you know, over the past uh, 20 years. You've seen, yeah. you've seen the progression year after year after year. Amazing. And we're now in this next phase, uh, you know, really driving the motto of IT as a service. And, and that, to me, probably is the most exciting at this juncture. You know, you're talking about Project Lightning, and I know it's sort of this, I'm actually not sure exactly where it fits, but um, it looks like there's, it's designed organizationally to try to accelerate. And, 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 and I said to Rich, you know, and some, Rich Napolitano, in some ways I, I see you as a chef, you got all these technologies and EMC, then you bring them together, and you do a lot of that as well, I'm sure. But 
I don't know if you remember, so it was maybe a couple of years ago now, you had invited me in to say, all right, what are you guys seeing? And one of the things that I talked about was this whole you know, movement of data in the last 15 years, uh, and function rather, out into the storage array, and now we're starting to see it move back, you know, and flash and persistent flash and that whole, so that whole thing. And so Lightning is sort of a very interesting instantiation of that, that, that model, that vision. Um, it's changing again. You know, we're seeing that pendulum swing. What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, what's the balance? You know, where do you see that going? Yeah, I think there, you know, as you look at, if you look at some of the fundamental technology shifts, Pat talked about multi-core flash virtualization. Um, you know, these create, um, you know, opportunities to change the, the game. And uh, when you look at server flash, there's a lot of great opportunities with that to optimize uh, to take advantage of that, to exploit that for the IT model, and uh, but it also presents challenges, right? So it, you know, I think a lot of times uh, people in technology tend to be short-sighted. EMC, having decades of experience in the data center, in the IT industry, understand the challenges and what we're all about is how do we solve those problems in a very uh, thoughtful manner delivering you know, best in class capabilities, but also do it in a way and a manner in which um, you know, we can bring the quality and reliability standards to the market. And so when I look at uh, things like Project Lightning, we think they're very complementary to our strategy overall, you know, in terms of uh, you know, our overall strategy in core storage um, and what we're doing in, in terms of block file object and uh, we think these are very synergistic and, uh, and help us you know, deal with the problems of technology within the stack. And so this is, a, you know, if you will, an important critical building block for us you know, as we start to transform and as we get you know, down these paths of, um, you know, that, that Pat talked about related to multi-core flash and virtualization. Yeah, so Symmetrics, uh, uh, is obviously the flagship product of EMC. You've seen tremendous changes uh, over the years. And then you've introduced some innovations. Uh, VPlex, you know, VPlex Geo now is, uh, you've you announced it previously, but now you're, you're actually going to market with it. Correct. Um, sort of solve the speed of light problem for some use cases sometimes, right? So <laughs> it <talk> helps. <laughs> yeah. To talk about the, the, you know, what, you've, what you're doing there and how customers might be using it just at a high level. Yeah, we see uh, three predominant use cases. Um, first is for data mobility, whether it's within the data center between disparate parts of the infrastructure or uh, between data centers. So the ability to actively move information and applications dynamically. Uh, the second is all about uh, um, availability. So we've enhanced it for zero downtime, zero uh, data loss added automation, added additional protection uh, with the witness and also with cross-connect so we can tolerate multiple failures and still maintain the quality of service to the application layer. And then the third is, I think, going to be the next big thing, which is all about distributed data collaboration and making it seem like people are you know, literally within the same office when they may be at different locations around the globe. And so we're driving a lot of new thinking in this space um, in uh, various industries, uh, whether it be oil and gas, healthcare, uh, um, you know, uh, intelligent systems, as well as media and entertainment, and looking at how do we uh, you know, cut down cycle times of collaboration? How do we save time? How do we save money? And now with GEO available, um, you know, our capabilities with GEO, we're, we enable, we kind of shorten the distance around the globe. Also, integration with our partners, with our uh, you know, WAN partners like uh, Silver Peak and Sienna and Brocade and Cisco, you know, and the cache capabilities that we have inherent in VPlex, we can not solve the speed of light, but we can you know, kind of soften the blow of the speed of light um, through optimization, Layer two, layer three, virtualization, as well as the cache coherency. Sounds like a lot of software Absolutely. invention. I yeah. mean, you know, I remember it used to be about buses and there, you know, That's right. uh, it's, and the like. Um, if you had like a hundred dollars of resource to to allocate, or let's say you know, let's take your whole resource and it's a, let's assume it's a hundred dollars. How much of that would be in software versus hardware innovation? 
uh, for, me, for my organization. For your organization, yeah. Uh, 100% right now. 100%. If you look, and Rich, uh, you know, Rich and I are in the same boat. Between the two of us, we have about 4,000 engineers worldwide. We have zero hardware engineers between us. So uh, net net of it, I think EMC is about uh, 16,000 worldwide, and we've got about 350 that are doing hardware development. So we're leveraging a lot of the common componentry uh, of our technology, and um, it's really about software, software IP. Brian, what has been the biggest, um, What uh, you mentioned the change and transformation of EMC and the massive change. What has been the biggest surprise for you relative to, you know, to your organization and around this change? Anything that you want to share? Is it the people issues? Is it the software? What, what biggest surprise or aha moment have you had over the past couple of years or year? Yeah, I would say the biggest challenge is, you know, how we scale the company globally. You know, so EMC, clearly global company. Uh, we've uh, gotten much more global over the past several years. If you look at our sales mix that we uh, announced in our, uh, in our recent earnings uh, announcement, we've shifted that mix, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, more towards the international side. We're still over 50% domestic in terms of our, our sales mix. So it's really about uh, how do we work together as a company globally, and then as we have acquired, how do we assimilate and integrate uh, the new companies into EMC without destroying the culture of the acquired company? And so it's, I think you know, EMC probably has done yeah. the best job in this area about getting finding best in yeah. breed, uh, getting them plugged into the EMC engine without putting too much burden. I think if you talk to some of the acquired companies, they might say it's still a burden. You know, there's still it's Compared like drinking. Startup, it's I mean, not a burden, but it's like drinking from a fire hose when they come <laughs> in. You guys have executed pretty well. I mean, extremely well on the integration side. Um, at the analyst meeting in ja um, in ja January, Joe Tucci said we're the uh, littlest of the bigs, and, and Dave Vellante asked him a question about valuation. We still think you're undervalued Absolutely. relative to the VMware component, and, and we're not just saying that because we're, we're fanboys of EMC. We really legitimately see that in the research, but you know, Joe says, we're the littlest of the big, and Pat, yesterday, or two days ago, said, we're going to take more share. So when we asked him about the Green Plum Hadoop announcement, it was all about taking more territory. So you guys have to grow, right? So your growth strategy, how are you going to take your high-end product, your crown jewel, and scale that up and take more share? Is there new markets? Is it product line extensions? Is it more acquisitions, all of the above? Yeah, I'd say, you know, there's just basic fundamentals of growth. Um, you know, obviously taking share is one. Uh, second is uh, increasing total addressable market is two. Um, disrupting the disruptors, which is really protecting yourself, is the third. And then we could always take the Exxon Mobil case and raise prices, um, you know, uh, but we won't. Uh, we, we're, not in a, yeah, <laughs> we're not in an industry that can but, do that. But not uh, prices per terabyte. <laughs> right. uh, but oil and gas, you know, they, you know, they're in a different start industry. A it's all about, you know? you know, supply and demand. But you know, IT has not historically been like that. So, uh, as we look at it uh, in the high end, we have taken share last year. Um, you know, clearly we jumped a new swim lane in market share. Um, there's new competitors trying to get into the market as well, uh, but we expect to take more share this year in the high end. Um, you know, we've seen Hitachi with their channels start to uh, struggle, you know, clearly with Sun, uh, the Sun channel, and we expect the same with HP. Um, so we'll take share. As we look at expanding TAM, I think there's some growth opportunities that we see, you know, clearly with new routes to market with VCE, uh, also, uh, the uh, cloud service provider markets, we see opportunities in that for high-end storage as well. And uh, clearly, VPlex has been a door opener for us, so we expect to do you know, uh, to have some more uh, opportunities in that how, space how this, as well. How about this big data trend? I think one of Bob Graham's big challenges is going to be how to position for big data. Now, I wrote a piece beginning of the year, and actually, I put a line in there. I said that when Brian reads this, if, if he reads it, it's, it's going to tick him off. I said, symmetrics is not big data. I narrowly define big data around you know, dispersed, I mean, Hadoop-like like data. So, um, is symmetrics big data? Am I wrong about that? Yeah, I think it plays in both space of cloud and big data. You know, if you look at uh, where we've been historically is in 
you know, data warehousing and analytics, uh, you know, in the past, we expect to be there in the in the future as well. And I think there's capabilities that we bring to that that space. Um, you know, clearly the uh, the acquired uh, companies of Greenplum and Isilon are you know just perfect fits for big data. Uh, but we think some of our enterprise capabilities in both VMAX and VNX. So I don't think there's a you know single product you know, answers all questions in this space. I think it's a matter of, uh, you know, the, the requirements for uh, the applications that we serve. But if you look at, you know, what, uh, where Green Plum has been playing, you know, clearly uh, has been in this space since their, you know, their inception. And then Isilon's capability of scale out is just a perfect fit for yeah, this Yeah, well, I think somebody said, it might have been Rich, said, you know, don't worry, don't get so caught up in, you know, defining what it is. I mean, right. big data's in the eye of the beholder, I guess. And, uh, having said that, I think one of the things that we see is that you know the so-called emerging big data, the Hadoop-like stuff that's distributed and dispersed and unstructured, eventually will find its way into some kind of aggregated system. Symmetrics has always been a leader in the traditional data warehousing marketplace, hasn't it? So right. we see those as complementary. Do you see it as yeah, well? Yeah, I, I would say I'd, I'd kind of simplify it and put it this way. We don't believe the answer is or right, either this or that, we think the answer is and, right, meaning that uh, it's the sum of the parts. So I think in this space, you know, clearly we've got now best of breed technology to go, you know, help solve uh, some big problems in the big data space. You know, so I think fundamentally it's a, you know, it's a, an area of opportunity when we, again, when we looked at the data warehouse and analytics market, we said this is just, you know, this is just a natural progression of EMC. And yeah, uh, to extend a lot of our core uh, capabilities and then bring new capabilities to market. Yeah, and you had some interesting dynamics going. You've always been very strong there, as I said. You had Oracle sort of elbowing its way in with Exadata. I mean, right. it had to yeah. grab your attention. And uh, you know, great move. We've been following that for a while with uh, with Greenpump. The question, I want, uh, Dave, is that the, that's interesting. Is you mentioned disrupting the disruptors, and you know, you mentioned high end. What's what does that mean, high end, with software being a part of the equation? And you're talking about Vplex and Geo, and what does high end mean? It seems distributed, and that's uh, kind of what Pat was talking about. So the question is. What is the high end going to look like? It's not just gear and iron, right? Um, it, it could be other things. And two, um, I'm fascinated by your comment, disrupting the disruptors. Who are they? What does it look like? What do they look like? Um, I mean, obviously Hadoop was one. You see companies like Cloudera and, and uh, the ex Isilon guys at Datastax are out there. So, you know, are they the little guys like that? Or is it the disruptors like IBM? Is it? What does that mean? Yeah, so so let me ask, answer the first question is, you know, as we look at the high end, you know, historically we've, you know, segmented the market and that's how we're, you know, we, we go, you know, kind of quantify our business, you know, as we look at it. So traditionally, as we've talked about the high end, um, you know, it's been, uh, you know, by customer size and by IT spend of that customer. And, uh, you know, in that space, you know, that's what we call the, the, high, the high end The space. price performance so kind of thing. You know, well, it's not the technology, it's really, the, when we say high end, it's really uh, at a certain number of uh, employees Got of it. a customer okay. and a certain, um, a certain IT spend per year. Got it. And then we have the mid enterprise, then we've got uh, small to medium business and, and uh, Soho. And so, um, you know, when we look at high end market, um, obviously smaller number of customers um, and a lot of our technology fits into the, this high-end customer space. You know, we see, you know, we, we've got obviously SIM, and uh, that's, you know, predominantly where we play in the high-end uh, segment of the market with customers. A lot of video customers. on demand stuff, right? A lot of, yeah, a lot of, a lot of uh, customers with big needs in that space, and then our other products like VNX also play in that uh, space as well. And then when we look at disruptors, um, you know, there are, you know, clearly, uh, you know, as, as our uh, competitors have seen uh, EMC and our results that we've uh, been able to achieve year after year after year, they want to be able to get part of that market, right? And so we see some newcomers into that space, clearly 3PAR, XIV, you know, uh, some, um, you know, uh, uh, newer uh, entries, compellent uh, into the space. Now they've been acquired by other bigger companies um, you know, so in that space, in our traditional core, we see disruptors, and then we see technology disruptors as well. Yeah. 
Um, Hadoop is a good example of that. We want to be the leader in that space. And then and you're we getting also in see early too. You're seeing early movement there. Right. And so. then we also see business model disruptors. Um, you know that we need to make sure that we're aligned to as it looks to cloud service providers. You know, and making sure that we're you know part of that and supplying technology yeah. into that market. Um, you know, and so. also uh, you know as we look at the competitive space with you know Google and Amazon and others. You know, we got to make sure that we're focusing our resources in the right area. Are you guys, um, I know Pat mentioned it, and Joe talks about this, Joe's a strategist, Joe Tucci's a great strategist. You can see, you know, his mind working, great CEO. Uh, obviously the acquisitions that you sponsored and, and Rich sponsored, uh, Pat, you guys are a great team. But you got this EMC acquisition machine. What about EMC Ventures? I mean, there's been some talk lately about EMC Ventures, big Silicon Valley, West Coast offense that we've been saying um, with marketing, but also, there's been some discussions about investments. Is that going to be something you guys will continue to do? Is, is that going to be internal to EMC? Is it going to be strategic investing? Great question. Um, can answer it. <laughs> How much under management? Yeah, <laughs> can <laughs> answer it on a number of fronts. Look okay, at um, Intel Capital. I mean, Intel Capital has was early on a strategic. Now they're a little bit more financially motivated with their, their but they were strategically doing great deals and seeing yeah. all the early deals. Yeah, I think it, you know, obviously we're looking at it as, you know, complementary to our business and, um, you know, helping strengthen, strengthen EMC overall. But, um, you know, again, I, I really can't, can't comment on that. <laughs> we stay Damn. away from that space. Hey, Dave, you try. <laughs> Come on, it's the cube. Nice try. <laughs> I don't Come know on, if Pat, or, we're having I don't fun, know if Pat or Joe answer that, but <laughs> Brian's going to say can't answer. Yeah, yeah. Joe, 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 don't say right. anything. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's innovation, it's interesting. You know, the Hadoop thing was, for me, is a great uh, signal for me about the new EMC because, you know, that's something that traditionally is not an EMC maneuver to get in that early um, and play in the sandbox like that. So I'm finding that to be an interesting and aggressive move by EMC to get in there early like that. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, you know, again, great opportunity in a great market, yeah. you know, that yeah. there's going to be tremendous growth. And so, you know, I think it's a, you know, this was perfect timing, EMC World, you know, announcing the Hadoop uh, strategy with Green Plum and the Hadoop appliance. It's really going to be, I think, a big, um, you know, help to our customers uh, with big data problems and a big help to EMC as well. All right. All right. We're here with Brian Gallagher, uh, president of EMC's Enterprise Storage Division and uh, Cube alum, Brian, thanks for coming back and talking to us. You've been- Two years you, in a row, man. Yeah, two years in a row. You, you, you've seen the transitions. I mean, you're sort of, you, you, you of all people have seen the sort of the original EMC sort of evolve into what we have now. It's just been yeah. phenomenal to watch. We appreciate all your support coming on theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you, thanks all for right. having me. I appreciate it.